Welcome to the Legalpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Sager, and I'm dedicated to covering common legal issues for small business owners and just how some of the world's most elite entrepreneurs have handled legal issues themselves. In true attorney fashion, the information in this episode is not legal advice. This is for informational purposes only, and you should always consult with your attorney before implementing any of the information. Now, on to the show. Hey, hey there. How's it going? All right. Today's episode is about trademark searches. I want to go deep dive into this because So many people don't understand the importance of a trademark search. And quite frankly, because they don't do the trademark search, that's why they end up getting in trouble with trademarks. Trademark law, as we know, it's hard to get damages, but guess what? If you listened to the episode a couple of weeks ago about why trademark infringement lawsuits are about to skyrocket, then you know that it is about to be a lot easier to get damages in trademark infringement cases. So I'm trying to focus a lot on trademarks right now because people need to get their business protected now more than ever because of the most recent Supreme Court case. So if you have not listened to that episode, make sure to go listen to that as well. It's it's just a quick one. It was a few weeks ago. Trademark lawsuits are about to skyrocket. It's time to get your trademark game in line. So yeah, go listen to it and you'll find out why trademark lawsuits are about to skyrocket. All right. Trademark searches. So if you have ever worked with us or if you've ever worked with a trademark attorney, most likely you have heard about the trademark search. This is completely different than your own search. And I'm going to explain why, but some attorneys will file without the search. However, we will not. The search is required if you want to file an application with us because number one, trademarks are a money and time investment. So we don't want to waste your money or your time. And that's why we require the search because it's a preliminary search that helps us know, number one, that you're not infringing on anybody. And number two, you have a high chance of being successful in the application process. Just because you file the application doesn't mean you're going to get registered. And there's a million things that can come up in the application process. So we have to know what's involved and what hiccups we're going to encounter. So that's the purpose of the search. So what happens in the search? We look for, of course, anything that is the same, but because trademark infringement occurs when there are two names that are likely to cause confusion with each other, so that means they can just be similar. They don't have to be the same exact name. Because of that, we're also looking for similar names. And this is exactly why your search is not sufficient because you don't know every single possibility that can happen. You don't know everything that's so similar that is likely to cause confusion with consumers. Because even though you're like, oh, nobody would ever be confused by that. Well, guess what? The trademark office may have a completely different view. And that's often what happens. You do your quick Google search, you DIY, do it yourself. So you search Google, You'll maybe you search domain names, maybe you even search the trademark database, the test database and you don't find anything that's the exact same, well, guess what? Even though there may be something that's not the exact same, there could be something similar that is likely to cause confusion. And if there is anything likely to cause confusion that's registered, well, number one, your trademark application will be refused. And number two, if there is something similar that's not registered, That means they may have common law rights because whoever is in business first has priority. So then we have to have the conversation of, okay, well, they're not registered. So you'll probably get the trademark registration. However, you don't actually have trademark rights. The other party does. So then we have to get strategic because, okay, if you don't have trademark rights, what's the point of going through the process? Well, there's a million different conversations that can come up. So it's like, okay, we can be strategic and get the registration, force them to spend money to cancel your registration. And maybe we can have the conversation, okay, well, do they look like a serious business? Maybe they're just a hobby business. Maybe they're just a Facebook group that popped up a couple of years ago and they haven't done anything else with it. There's literally a million things that can come up. So it's hard to say what exactly will we find in the search. Buddy, I don't know. Often I'm surprised at what we find, but we require the search. And that's because there's so many things that can happen and you have to be prepared to know what is going to happen. 
Now, if you're DIYing the whole thing, if you're doing it yourself, perhaps you don't need to spend money on a comprehensive search. Our search is more money than the filing fee if you're doing it yourself. So in that situation, if you are doing it yourself, then you can just file, but just know that you may have all kinds of hiccups. You may have all kinds of issues. So if you're a DIYer, I have nothing against that. I have totally been there. But number one, do not use any third-party website such as LegalZoom or Trademarkia or whatever else is out there because they're not actually attorneys. I know a lot of people are led to believe that those cheap sites are attorneys or they're a law firm, but they're not. So the only thing you're actually paying them for is to use their specific form. And they do have options to upgrade to a search or to actually working with an attorney. But most of the time when I've seen that, it's actually more than it costs to work with me and my team or another small business attorney. So if you want to DIY, then just go straight to the trademark office, which is uspto.gov. And the trademark office does have a lot of great resources, but I personally have had clients tell me, look, I did it myself several years ago, but it took me like five, 10 hours to figure it all out. So if you don't have that time, then definitely work with an attorney. And again, there may be so many strategic reasons why we need to wait. Sometimes it comes up, we do the search. And when you file a trademark, you have to select different classes, different classes of goods and services. There's a total of 45 different classes of goods and services, and everybody falls under at least one. Well, if you're doing multiple things, maybe it's riskier in one class, but it's not as risky in the other. So that's where we get strategic with clients. We talk about, okay, maybe we only want to file in this one class and we can wait on this other class or get very specific on the goods or the services in order to hopefully avoid a refusal with you know a similar registration. So, I mean, there's all kinds of things that can come up, but you have to absolutely be familiar with the possibilities that can happen. It's a significant time investment. It's a significant money investment. So we have to know what's out there before going through the process. And that's why we require the search because we're not going to waste your time. We're not going to waste your money. And we want you to be prepared because yeah, it may be 1850 to file the application. But if you get that likelihood of confusion refusal, the one that nobody wants, then there is an additional fee. You don't want that additional fee. So we have to be strategic, figure out how to avoid it if it is a possibility. Hopefully it's not a possibility, but quite frankly, it happens. Takeaways from the trademark search. Number one, we're looking for a lot more than just the exact same name. We're looking for anything similar. Number two, we want to make sure that you have priority. So there's no other business out there that doesn't have a registration, but they still have priority over you. Number three, We also want to make sure that you're going to be successful in the trademark process because we don't want to file and not get registered. I have had those happen. Very few, but they stink. When you are embarking on the trademark application process, if you're going to work with an attorney, whether it's me or another attorney, make sure a search is completed. If you're going to DIY, you don't necessarily need a search. So I I do have clients that file their own applications, but they come to us first for the search. So if you DIY, feel free to do a search with us first. It's not required before you file because obviously you're doing it on your own. But again, don't rely on just your own search because I have had many instances where clients they search on their own, they search Google, they search domain names, they search social media, and there's nothing out there that's the same. However, comes out that they are infringing on other parties, whether it be because there's a similar name out there, it's just a different spelling or for whatever reason. So don't be that person that relies on your own search and you end up getting in trouble. It's very easy to avoid trademark infringement. You just have to get that trademark search done. All right. Well, I think I've chatted enough about searches. Hopefully I haven't hurt your brain too much about searches. Again, if you need a search, feel free to shoot us an email, andrea at andreasager.com. Mention this podcast episode and you will get a discount. So our searches are normally 550 
If you are a listener of the podcast, mention this for a $50 discount and we will do a search for you for $500 and you'll get all the results. You'll know exactly what's out there. You'll know, you know, who was in business before you, who's infringing on you. That's another one that a lot of people don't realize is if you've been in business, there's most likely people that are infringing on you. Because what I I always tell clients, look, 50% of the time, Either you're infringing on somebody or somebody's infringing on you. And that's why we need to do the search because, hey, we got to figure out what's going on. You don't want to get sued. And quite frankly, you don't want to sue anybody. All right. That's my spiel on trademark searches. Let me know if you have any questions. Share this to your stories on Instagram and tag us. All righty. I'm out. I'll see you next time. If you found this information helpful, I would be so grateful if you could share it with a fellow business owner. And it doesn't cost anything to rate, review, or subscribe to the show. Your support helps me reach more listeners, which allows me to support more business owners in their entrepreneurial journey. I'll see you next episode.